Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us for the first time, welcome to 2021. Happy New Year to you. We're about to take a look at what is making the headlines in the newspaper review segment of The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. And I have joining me PLOS TV Africa's news editor, Kayode Ladende. Kayode, good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning, Felicity. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Okay, let's start with uh, the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, the big one here is camels used to smuggle deadly weapons into Nigeria. This is coming from the ACF. Ransom money being used to buy illegal arms. you find details on page 20 of the paper. That's it on your screen now. There's a tiny little bit there where you have New Year um, from all of them. Okay, uh, there is more. New Year message, 2020 tough. We will brave any storm in 2021. That's from the president, Mohammed Bukhari. says security agencies to be reorganized, uh, re-energized. We have more. Biden appoints another Nigerian-American Okolo COVID policy advisor. Kaduna government demolishes sex party building. Uh, let's see. Songwalu signs 1.163 trillion Naira 2020 appropriation bill into law. And of course, uh, still on Chris, uh, New Year messages, Badabia Mila, Govs, others urge Nigerians to hope for a better 2021. And then there is a picture of celebrations across the world on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. But uh, before we take a look at that, uh, I guess it's still there, New Year message from the president. Uh, did you catch it on TV? Yes, uh, quite inspiring. I, I think uh, the president has done pretty well in stirring the hope. And uh, quite a lot of things that a lot of people are looking forward to is his plan to reorganize the security apartheid. You know, this is something that has been a debate all this while. But, you know, the president with his witchiness, we might not know what that reorganization means. It might mean the security chiefs and some other things. But let's be hopeful. Let's join the president to stay positive. All right. How about uh, camels being used to smuggle deadly weapons into Nigeria? Shouldn't this information be going to our security agencies? Is it necessary for it to be in the public domain? Uh, uh, some persons will say that is um, you know, amplifying the conflict with uh, the headers, farmers uh, situation. What do you think? Felicity, what is what is germane in what has happened is that it's coming from ACF. It's just for us to, uh, we shouldn't be too surprised that um, there, there has been proliferation of weapons across the country. But coming from ACF is to let the security know that they are not the only people that have this information. They are also worried. Our weapons get into the bandits, our weapons get into the Boko Haram insurgents. These are all a disturbing issues. So for ACF to speak up, for ACF to speak out and say that um, it's so sad that as low as Camel is, they are using it to bring in weapons. Let's not be insensitive. Let's not turn a blind eye to the movement of these dangerous weapons into the region. So I see it as something that should be taken seriously. Uh, it's not hidden any longer. Uh, it's only a smack of the fact that um, uh, uh, it's so, our borders are so porous, things are just happening anyhow, and they cannot continue to, to be killed. Their children are killed, their wives are killed, their husbands are killed, and it's not time to say this is a security issue. It's already a terrible situation, and the best thing to do is to cry out and tell us how terrible it is for camels to be used to bring in weapons to the region. So I think it only underscores how porous things, I mean, how porous our borders are. All and right. it should be taken seriously. Let's jump to the Daily Sun uh, this morning. Uh, 2020 are bitter experiences by Nigerians. Everybody has a story to tell about 2020. I know I do, but it wasn't all bad. Yes, we had a pandemic, but 
I don't know. What was your experience, Mr. Laden Day? Was it all gloomy or were there some spots of light? No, nah, I'm going to sound very religious now. <laughs> Feel free. You know, it's a new it, year. For, for the fact that um, I'm alive, for the fact that um, despite the pandemic and uh, the fact that we're very close to the heat of the NSAS pandemonium, and uh, for everything, I think it's not so much of a bad year if we could scale through this. But the big issue is, have we learned our lessons? Uh, how did we approach the pandemic, which was quite strange to different parts of the world, including Nigeria? And God was really on our side that um, the casualties were not so many like we have in United States and UK. So I just felt that enough of playing God, enough of playing religious cards, we need to be more proactive with the second wave that is coming. How prepared are we? Are we is, going to be having? Is it is it is it coming or it's already here, Mr. Ladende? A lot of exactly. persons will say it's already here. It's not coming. Mm, I totally agree with you because what, what I meant is coming is that um, we're yet to have serious lockdown. We're still struggling with the 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. curfew, and we have to come hard on people before they realize how serious the threat is. You know, we still see a lot of people taking directives for granted. Some people hold services against the protocols that are specified. So these are just to let us know that uh, we're yet to begin. Anyway, uh, there is more on the Daily Sun newspaper. While we were talking, my mind just flashed to how I got to know we're in 2021. The fireworks, as in the fireworks was something else. Did you experience that in your area? Uh, not really. I, I think uh, it's been a very funny, uh, how do I call it now, crossover night. I was in traffic for like... Uh, I, I wish I don't have to share this experience with you. You are Nikkei. It was almost, <laughs> <laughs> it was almost like uh, four or five hours of driving from 10 a.m. to like uh, 2 a.m. before oh. I could get home. So I didn't have the luxury of even seeing fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. I had to join, you know, a lot of, I had to join my church online as directed. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't. But there were, I think I only saw fireworks once or twice on the road, but I couldn't even hear the sound. I only saw the flashes up. Okay. Um, we'll definitely be talking about a crossover um, much later on the breakfast, okay. uh, time permitting. But let's look at some of the other issues on the Daily Sun newspaper. There's this one that's uh, catching my attention. Um, FG to borrow more as Buhari signs 2021 budget. Uh, there are two writers to that, sorry. Orders revenue generating MDAs to deliver on target or be sanctioned. Nigeria's debt hits 32.223 trillion naira. I saw that story yesterday and I'm waiting to get um, Dr. Ayogu here to talk about that a little more. Uh, more headlines here. UK pledges extra 47 million pounds aid to families hit by hunger. Seven million dollars uh, to Nigeria. Let's start with that one before you talk about the more borrowing. We are getting £7 million from the UK. Is that a good thing in your mind? You know, I, I, I just <laughs> remember one expression that I don't always like to refer to back then. They said Africa is known for two words, AIDS as in A-I-D-S, and uh, AIDS seeking for help all the time. <laughs> so, and for me, I feel it's a sad narrative. When should we start thinking of giving to these countries? Why are we always seen as a poverty ravaged countries? So these are not exciting words for me. Whatever AIDS we are looking at, trust me, these countries don't just give without anything in return. There is actually no Santa Claus anywhere. So it's just for us not to <laughs> gloss over it. But it's okay. We will get it because it's obvious from the budget 
we are looking at, there's going to be a whole lot of counterpart funding. There's going to be a whole lot of borrowing. And you and I know that our worry is what's our repayment plan? Are yeah. we just pumping it into paying salaries when we are presented it as taking care of capital projects? These are questions that um, this budget will seek to address. I see a whole lot of uh, fire brigade issues. I see a whole lot of uh, construction works going on in different parts, especially around my area. But beyond that, let's hope that the funds will not be you know, Misused. seized when we need it. You remember what the Minister of Works will always remind us, that uh, when you see this contract being halted, it's because funds is no longer available. All right. When are we going to have these funds dedicated? You know that this project will be completed on the, on the particular time. Okay, Let, let's go to the punch newspaper in the time we have okay. left. Um, rising COVID-19 cases. NUT cautions FG against January 18 school's resumption date. Teachers will stay at home if infections increase, says Teachers Union. Prepare for more COVID-19 patients in need of oxygen, NMA tells federal government. Um, let's see. Community kicks demands 500 million naira as Lagos officials demolish houses. The Aspera Commission condemns police killing of 27-year-old Nigerian in Ireland. Um, I saw that story in passing. I understand that he had mental health issues. Uh, quite unfortunate. Um, FG will ensure speedy determination of corruption cases, says Buhari. Uh, we've uh, talked about the ACF comment. Nigeria's debt profile also rises. Uh, the punch captures it. But the big screamer in front of us this morning, on our New Year Day, the punch is choosing to go with uh, NUT cautioning FG against um, school resumption. Um, what's your thinking on that? Uh, Felicity, I, I think it's a, bit, um, it's a bit tricky. Why I say that is quite a lot of people are back at work quite a lot of people are doing things that they needed to be done i think the worry should be more of the students and the pupils and not just these teachers these teachers will always demand for their salaries they will always demand irrespective of whether government has the money whether government is making money or not there should be some sense of responsibility to say that how do we also follow the necessary protocols as adults? And that um, maybe what they are looking at is if the pupils and students are not coming to school, why should we come to school? That is more valid than threatening that, oh, we will not come to school, we will not do this, we will not do that. However, it might be an opportunity for some of these facilities to be provided because we have a lot of public schools that do not have water that do not have good toilets and these are things that should be in place while trying to prevent the spread so right. it's neither here nor there but i believe that the teachers should be more responsible than threatening government government definitely will not even want to endanger their lives from the look of things all right uh, mr ladende I yes. must say thank you very much for joining us on this New Year morning to take a look at some of the headlines in the papers. The pleasure is mine. Thank you, Felicity. All right. See you soon. That's it for the newspaper review. We'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be looking at what happened today in history. Stay with us.